Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening everyone. First tonight, disturbing allegations of neglect and severe understaffing have surfaced at a northwest aged care home. A resident at Southern Cross Care's Burnie facility has spoken out, calling for the CEO to step down. Brian Halpern has called Yarrandu home for six years. To be quite honest, I, uh, I love the place. But the fondness is fading with claims things have gone downhill since the new CEO took the helm last year. Robin Boyd purposely cuts the number of carers back a day. We have at least two short a day, which means the other carers have got to take up that, that slack, so to speak. A lot of the carers go home uh, crying because they, they feel that they haven't been able to give us the proper care that we need. The health union says staffing has reached unacceptable levels and despite the Royal Commission findings, the quality of care has not improved. There were sanctions imposed uh, throughout the Royal Commission uh, which saw the exit of a long-standing CEO. Uh, we've now, uh, subsequent to that, uh, got a new CEO, but unfortunately we haven't seen a significant change in the way that issues are being dealt with. 60% of the residents here haven't got a voice. Now, in this particular case, uh, they're in, in their bed for 15 hours before they got out of the morning, showered and dressed, which is absolutely disgraceful, disgraceful. In a statement, Southern Cross Care says Yarrandu has more staff than required. With a number of beds empty, the management team has nonetheless made the decision to staff the facility as if it were at full capacity and that it rejects outright any claims that residents are receiving inadequate care. The not-for-profit organisation recently released its draft enterprise agreement, which would see slashes to penalty rates and meal breaks across its nine facilities. It says its employees are highly valued and it's committed to reaching a fair agreement through the negotiation process. There's absolutely no way uh, that we would support uh, such a serious cut uh, to workers' uh, conditions. Unfortunately, the CEO uh, won't appear at the bargaining table either. Aged Care Services Minister Richard Colbeck has met with management and staff, including the Chief Executive. He says the federal government is closely monitoring conditions at the site. Letitia Wallace, 7 Tasmanian News. A Sandy Bay man in his 70s has died in a kayaking incident near Hobart's regatta grounds. Police say just after 1pm the man was observed to be in distress in the water beside a kayak. He was retrieved from the water and received medical treatment but died at the scene. Anyone who saw the man is asked to contact police. A report will be prepared for the coroner. A man charged over the death of an 81-year-old pedestrian has had his charges dismissed. Irene Ganley died several days after being struck by a car on the corner of Victoria and Harrington Streets in 2019. Paul Anthony Skaberis pleaded not guilty to causing death by negligent driving and driving without due care and attention. Today, Magistrate Chris Webster told the court he is not satisfied a prudent driver in the circumstances faced by the defendant would have seen Mrs Ganley and avoided a collision. All charges have been dropped. Thirteen black spots on Tasmanian roads are in line for funding as part of a federal government program to increase safety for motorists. Road safety on the radar this week after a horror double fatal on one of our highways. A daily nightmare for drivers, this Upper Burnie intersection has been the site of many crashes and near misses. You've got commuters coming down, you've got school traffic and uh, I use this intersection two or three times a day so I can tell you it's, uh, uh, it gets a bit hairy at times. This has been on the council's radar for probably about 10 years. Uh, we've sort of been, always been working through what the best alternative is, whether it's a roundabout, whether it's lights. Traffic signals, roundabouts and revitalised junctions on the way for 13 black spots around the state. You know, when, we, when we're talking about safety, uh, you know, what price do you put on safety? So we think it's a, a wise spend. The announcement comes after a horror fortnight on our roads. Five lives lost, taking our road toll to 20, two more than the same time last year. Any road death is tragic and I, th I think what came to light to me with the National Road Safety Strategy, Tasmania failed that miserably unfortunately. 
Submissions are already rolling in for a road safety inquiry launched on Saturday. We're hoping to find some evidence-based recommendations to put to the government. There's no silver bullet, but obviously we need to find out you know, what's actually happening in Tasmania. Consultation also open for the Bass Highway 10-year plan, while the Midlands project is nearing its 2024 completion. They are ahead of schedule. Uh, there's a lot more to do in that regard, and that's creating a safer road and a more efficient uh, road system. Until then, taking care while on the road, the only answer. Josh Duggan, 7 Tasmania News. The United Workers' Union is claiming the state government is yet to deliver a mental wellbeing program for Tasmanian prison staff promised two years ago. The union met with Corrections Minister Elise Archer today to discuss ongoing staffing shortages in the prison system. It's creating unsafe work practices on our staff and our officers. That's creating um, mental health issues across the board as well as massive amount of uh, assaults. In a statement, Corrections Minister Elise Archer said she has requested the program be prioritised as soon as possible. Dozens of workers at the McCain potato processing plant will walk off the job in Smithton tomorrow over an ongoing pay dispute. They claim they've been left out in the cold for years and want a 4% pay rise. The Australian Manufacturing Workers' Union is backing the employees who are also calling for paid sick leave to be increased to 10 days. Beck Thomas has been voted in as Glenorchy's new mayor in the latest council by-elections. She'll replace Christy Johnston after her election as an independent MP in the House of Assembly. Ms Thomas received around 9,400 votes, beating Sue Hickey by 3,000, who was also vying for the top spot. Today's counting also revealing Paula Reid as Kingborough's mayor to replace newly elected Labor MP Dean Winter, while Shane Pitt will be mayor of West Coast Council. The Tasmanian Electoral Commission has found confusion on where to vote on election day for the state's upper house wouldn't have changed the result. Around 1,700 people in both Derwent and Windermere attended House of Assembly only voting places after being told they needed to go to dual voting booths. A new advertising campaign is hitting our screens to remind Tasmanians to have their second COVID jab. The ads feature some familiar Tasmanian faces, among them ex-cricketer David Boone with one simple message. There you go, David. How was that? Get your shot. Don't wait. Vaccinate. Fewer than 20% of eligible Tasmanians have received their second dose. Organisers of the Tasmanian Open Dance Sport Championships say they're gutted by its cancellation. The event has been canned for a second year, this time due to lockdowns, preventing many competitors and adjudicators from reaching the state. This was to be our biggest year ever. We had over 500 couples coming along to this event and that is just amazing. Our audience was close to a sellout already with a few weeks to go. They say the decision keeps them viable and planning for next year's event will begin soon. A new scenic walking track connecting to Huon Valley Towns has officially opened. It's hoped the path will become an added tourist attraction for the region. Quietly nestled in the heart of the Huon Valley, this walking track winding alongside the river now open to the public. It is three kilometres long. It takes in the beautiful landscape of uh, the, part, the part between Port Huon and Jeeveston. Uh, it takes in water views as well as our natural habitat. Fairly flat and accessible, the trail allowing walkers to be among nature. We have 300 metres of boardwalk as well, which goes over marshland, uh, which is in the Glen Huon section, which is rather exciting because it's lovely to have such a long uh, a piece of the walk which is literally over the water. Connecting Port Huon and Jeeveston thanks to $1.25 million of federal funding. People are choosing to live in regional communities like the Huon Valley so we need to support these growing communities with renewed and expanded infrastructure just like this. The three kilometre walking track is set to showcase the Huon's picturesque natural habitat aiming to draw more tourists to the region. It does celebrate the history of the area, whether that's the cultural uh, traditional owners uh, or whether that is the pioneers. And uh, that is an attraction too. So we will have some signage around that as well, which makes it uh, very interesting then for tourists. Ruby Kamein, 7 Tasmania News. The police are targeting Hewenville in their ongoing bid to keep illegal guns off our streets. 
Residents are being encouraged to hand in firearms at the Hewanville Police Station on Saturday between 10 and 2. No questions asked. It's the latest in a series of amnesty drives aimed at curbing gun crime. A permanent firearms amnesty remains in place across the state for people to surrender weapons without fear of prosecution. Tassie anglers can once again reel in a prized catch as part of the latest tag trout competition. This year there are more locations to wet a line and increase your winning odds. Puckering up for a day on the water. And the best thing to do is give them a good kiss. <laughs> Angling reels in the young and old, all for one purpose. Catching the big fish. Now there's an even better reason to wet a line, with the next season of the tag trout competition underway. This year there's 50 brown trout up for grabs, each worth $2,000. And there's only one way to know if you're on to a winner. It's pretty easy to know which one it is because it'll be the tag will be in the dorsal fin or close to the dorsal fin. They'll all be orange, so uh, you know you can't miss it. The event boosting tourism in regional areas like the Derwent Valley. If you can come, bring the kids, bring you know, play at our fantastic parks, visit our um, our shopping district, um, and drop a line and, and potentially catch a, a couple of grand fish. Um, what, what better uh, holiday can you have than that? The trout have been released into 15 waterways across Tasmania, but to snag the prize money, there is a catch. Catch a fish, uh, kill it, uh, leave it as it is, and as soon as possible take it to the inland fisheries and show them that fish complete with the stomach and all still in it. For the full list of locations, visit the Inland Fisheries website. The event casts off on August 1. Ainsley Kosh, 7 Tasmania News. Some up-and-coming young filmmakers have unveiled their first project showcasing the Launceston suburb of Youngtown. Students from the area interviewed locals and honed their cinematography skills before premiering their work today. I learnt many new skills like using cameras, lighting and also kind of social skills. I learnt to talk to people from our community. Probably getting to meet some of the new people and being able to do all of these great things that we wouldn't normally be able to do. The film was created as part of the Council's ABCDE Learning Site program. NBL One matches have been postponed for another weekend. The North West Thunder's Mason Bragg is one of the local players who now has some extra time at home. Normally every Saturday night of the year is pretty much taken up by basketball games, so it's really been good to hang out with family and friends and kind of just enjoy stuff away from basketball. Bragg is confident the league will commit to seeing out the season. No surprises in the NPL overnight, with ladder leader Devonport thumping bottom placed Riverside Olympic the final score 8-0. Despite the scoreline reading 2-0 at the half, the floodgates opened in the closing 20 minutes of the game. And the Tasmanian Tigers' hunt for a new coach is in motion, with the former player Ali De Winter named as Jeff Vaughan's replacement for the time being. The Tigers have had international interest in the role, which will be met with an earlier than usual start to the Sheffield Shield season. A player in the 80s and 90s turned modern-day coach Ali De Winter is now leading the domestic charge, but not for long. We don't want someone to be pressurised with short-term results, vying for a job and trying to build relationships with players. We, we just want them to come in, execute their role as a coach for the best of the playing group. He will take control while a recruiting agency works out who should replace Jeff Vaughan after his ascent to the national squad. Sydney Sixers and former Tigers coach Greg Shippard is also joining the interim team. The Tigers buying as much time as they can, roundly rejecting a quick fix. This is certainly a long-term appointment. You know, we're not trying to chase success over the next two years. A three- to five-year tenure is what the Tigers are after. The clock is ticking, though, with the Sheffield Shield season starting in September for just the second time in history. I'm a big fan. Um, it means less time uh, in pre-season here, so the earlier we can start playing cricket, the better. A day-night clash for Hobart in February headlines the domestic one-day fixture. While the women's schedule has teams again playing blocks of games around the country, after finishing third last season, Naomi Stalenberg says the big focus is to go big. We've been doing a, a, a fair bit of power hitting, so a theme that came from the season before and a couple of seasons before uh, last year was power hitting and hitting boundaries. As for whether the time is right for another title... we finished seasons really well, so we, we get a lot of belief, I think, um, at the end of seasons that we're, we're capable of you know, going on and pushing for titles. And 
yeah, I think we're, we're right, in the, right in a window at the moment to, to be doing that. Good evening. As expected, a below average night last night. Minus three the low on Mount Wellington. Hobart and Devonport 15 today. Launceston and Burnie 14. 15 was the top. That was also recorded by St Helens, Friendly Beaches and Bushy Park. Wynyard Grove and Flinders Island all 14. Lowhead, Strawn and King Island 13. Low level clouds streamed over the state today but plenty of clear sky though across the state, particularly over the east. All that cold, unstable air is over southeast Australia. Middle level clouds stretches from south of WA over South Australia. Tomorrow the high will move across Queensland with a low to follow. A cold front passes south of the Bight. Westerly winds tending northwesterly and increasing to 20 to 30 knots over the west and south. Four metre swells in those waters. Strong wind warning from South East Cape to Sandy Cape. Hobart, a high of 13 and partly cloudy. Signet 13, 12 the top for New Norfolk. Launceston, a high of 12 with a morning frost, a showery day, 12 the high for Devonport, partly cloudy for Campbelltown, zero overnight, a top of 12 later. 11 the high for Burnie with a shower or two, strawn showers as well, 13, same for Smithton, and for St Helens, 14 and partly cloudy. Swansea, 14 as well, minus one for Fingal in the morning, 13 later. On Friday, showers over the north and King Island while easing from the west coast. A shower over the north and west on Saturday, extending statewide during the afternoon and evening. Not much over the east, though. And on Sunday, showers, along with snow to 400 metres, winds shifting westerly. Further north and partly cloudy in Perth tomorrow. A cold, rainy day for Adelaide, partly cloudy for Melbourne. A very chilly start to the day in Canberra. Sunny in Sydney and Brisbane. And here are the current conditions. And Kim, I've been told to be very quick because we're running out of time. You know how I like following instructions, don't you? Ah, <laughs> get off. Thanks, Murph. That's all we have time for. Good night.